Hiking buddies are important. Not only are they good company, but they often provide a little boost when you're feeling flat. Well, today you're going to meet a couple of people and uh, characters who spend quite a bit of time on the trail together and not without being noticed. Every year on a particular day, hundreds of hikers converge on Mount Washington for a single purpose, to raise money for the weather observatory on the summit. It's called Seek the Peak. Today, we're going to meet a couple of those hikers who have a particular story to tell about their ascent to the summit of Mount Washington. Looky! <laughs> She's like, I don't want to look right now. Melissa Elam, right? Yes. You got it? Yes. <laughs> it is a pleasure to meet you, my it's dear. Nice to meet you. Although you have your back to me <laughs> so that Floki's face won't be away from me. Poor Floki. Male, female? Female. And she goes with you on hikes everywhere? She does. She's been up all the 48? She has been. Uh, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely amazing. World traveler. How old is she now? She's about two and a half. Ah, uh, okay. Well, today we're gonna, you're gonna be upset with the pace today because it's no. gonna be quite slow. We're going at the Black Cap Trail, which is described as a moderate mm -hmm. climb. It can be, for sure. That's the limit of my powers these days. <laughs> but uh, that's okay, we'll, we'll get along. And uh, along the way, you can talk about your ascent of Agiochuk, the big one. Mount Washington. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, good. Uh, Shall we? Sure. Okay. All right. The Black Cap Trail sits just north of Conway, New Hampshire, in the White Mountains. Oh, Floki, so pretty. There's no breeze today. It's one of Mel and Floki's favorite getaway places. Does she ever walk on her own? She does. Yeah. Uh, She'll usually tell me when she's ready to get down. Right now, she's kind of just relaxing. She, you want to come out? Mel has a story to share about hiking with Floki and their recent trip up Mount Washington. Figure out. Mel's partner, Chris Smullen, is with us. He's a photographer who records many of their hikes. Some of the more memorable ones for me are uh, winter hiking um, up a few of the 4,000 footers in some pretty ridiculous weather, um, especially trying to keep this stuff uh, from breaking. But uh, I hadn't been up uh, 4,000 footer or done much hiking in the winter. And uh, with her and Floki, um, it was quite the experience. Animals are an important part of Mel's life. She hiked for six years with her chocolate lab, Leia. Um, oh gosh, Leia and I were very, very close. Uh, she, uh, she was with me through everything. And she was just like man's best friend, basically, always, always with me um, outside. I couldn't be anywhere in the house without her being around me. She always had to be there. She was with me through all my pregnancies. Leah helped Mel through the COVID pandemic and a divorce. But age and injuries forced the reliable hiking partner into retirement. With Leah off the trails, Mel continued alone. She was just like my best friend. Um, and so it killed me when I had to retire her from the trail because I started to hike with her and started to train with her for Seek the Peak. And um, I never brought her up any of the big mountains with me. Um, we stayed on the smaller stuff just because she was older when she started. After Leah died, Mel drove to a shelter looking for another companion. And so I went to the shelter and 
uh, went originally to look at a little black cat named Skipper, <laughs> and uh, Floki was in the cage above him, and she just reached out and grabbed me. And since then, she hasn't let go. Floki and Mel are trail buddies. There's just something different about her from the start. Um, she was very loving towards me, immediately like stuck to me, like glued to me, would not leave my side. And we would laugh and call her like a purr box because she would never stop purring. All she did was purr and she just wanted to be loved and just wanted to be near me. Oh, look, they got an Andy too. <laughs> Mel needed, um, you know, a, a companion um, after her previous dog passed and with some other stuff that happened um, around the same time in her life. And uh, Floki, like she said, reached out and grabbed her, but I think she needed Floki as much as Floki needed her. Name, I had a dream that I would have a cat that I would hike with, and in the dream, the name was Floki. And so it just seemed fitting when I adopted her to, uh, to name her Floki, except it was originally a boy <laughs> in the dream. Um, so I was like, well, why not? Let's see. And apparently it was meant to happen, because here we are. Mel uses social media to share many of her adventures with Floki. One of our first bigger mountains I did, uh, North Twin, and we <laughs> were going up and I'd stopped to take a break at the river that runs alongside the trail on the way out. And um, Floki had never seen a river before and it didn't, I didn't even think about it. And she goes up and she kind of looks at it and I'm watching her. And then I realize she's going to just step into it. <laughs> so it created this effect where she hit the water and then I pulled. So she jumps out of the water. <laughs> completely submerged herself and just runs and it is the funniest and obviously not to her but in that moment I don't think I have laughed that hard in months um, and I felt so terrible for her but she wasn't afraid she went right back to it again <laughs> okay, okay. okay drop down <laughs> the videos and photographs entertain Mel hopes they make a connection with people, too. Thousands, literally thousands of strangers we will never meet um, enjoy our posts and the stuff that we do together. So it, it's, it's overwhelming and it's wonderful. I'm getting a lot of messages saying thank you so much. Like, yeah. I used to love that mountain and now I can't get there. And thank you, your videos and your pictures are incredible and I get to kind of live it again. And yeah. I think there's a sense of wonderment too that comes from people um, with their cats at home that just can't picture how their cat might climb a mountain. <laughs> um, we get pictures, well, when she posts something, there's a lot of really cute comments of, uh, you know, well, Mr. Bubbles is probably isn't going outside today, and, and he's like lounging on the couch within the sun, you know. And I love those. And so I think that you know, there's a there's a contrast that makes it interesting too. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 I love it. I love Floki for that too. We'll leave Black Cap for now and head up to Mount Washington, where Mel. Floki and a group of their hiking buddies recently got together to participate in Seek the Peak. Hi, baby. Um, and today we're hiking for Seek the Peak. This is um, Shandy. Hi. And Becky, my friend Joe, Carrie, Michaela, Ashley, Chase, Athena, and Scott. And they're all part of my team and we're getting ready to go up. Seek the Peak is an annual event that draws hundreds of participants. The peak refers to the summit. That's where they'll find the weather observatory that they raise money for. Awesome. Mel's team will use the Tuckerman Ravine Trail to get there. Yes. <laughs> One into the pack to the other into the pack. One into the pack to the other into the pack. <laughs> How's it going, Scott? Good. Well, I felt stronger at 74 than I did at 75. 
The Tuckerman Ravine Trail is a 3.6-mile hike all uphill. The elevation gain is a bit more than 4,200 feet. I feel great. It's going to be my first time doing it. Um, I've only hiked this route up Tuckerman's three times, and I've taken Lion's Head up, but we're going to go up the ravine to seek the peak. We're going to go to the summit of Mount Washington. Becky's already down to... Uh, I'm going to ice it up before we started. Uh, all right. Hey, I'll be too fast. Okay. Much better. I haven't started to sweat, but... Oh, no, I'm dripping already. Can you go? Can you go? <laughs> A brief hey. glance uphill, and Floki's on her way back downhill. <laughs> Not going back that way yet. Yeah, she's been going backwards lately. <laughs> I think she wants to go downhill. I don't blame her. All the members of Mel's hiking team know her. They're friends, and they enjoy Floki. We met uh, through a hiking community, and I do like met Floki through the internet, and then I reached out, and I was like, oh. And yeah, we've done a couple 4Ks, 52 for her 100, so it was weird. She was hiking her 100, and I was hiking my 99. Why are you doing Seek the Peak? Oh, to support Mel. She's a great friend. She's an awesome person, heart of gold, and uh, her taking Floki up is just, yeah, it's a, it's inspiring to everyone, you know? So, um, and I met her, I started Hiking Buddies, NH48, which is a little group on Facebook. And through there, I made some friends and found Mel, and yeah, been following her and Floki around since. And Floki always puts a smile on my face and everyone else's, so I'm happy to be here to support. Floki's in the company of friends, but not all are human. Uh, he's intensely interested in her. He occasionally will break into her house and go visit. So they've, they've interacted a lot. He's thankfully good with cats, so no scary concerns. But he is big and toothy, and I don't think she's his biggest fan. This is Mel's fourth year raising money for the Weather Observatory. So it's what started it all for me. Uh, 2014, I did my first one. I trained really hard and I lost a lot of weight and, um, and I fell in love with being out here. And so I just kept going. Um, I stopped for a couple years because I had uh, my daughter in work and then I went back to school to become a surgical tech. and. Um, so it kind of got away from me for a little bit, but I started again about two years ago, full time. I finished my, uh, 48 and then we finished Floki's, uh, in nine months. And so I just kept going and now we're out here every weekend. Uh, Seek the Peak is important to me because all the money that we're raising is going to the Mount Washington Observatory, which for me is where I go to when I want to hike a mountain. It gives you very detailed, accurate, 36 hour out um, forecasts. That's Tuckerman's Ravine right there. The team takes a break at Hermit Lake. They're 2.4 miles along the trail. Mel and Floki have hiked throughout New England. In less than one year, they climbed all of New Hampshire's 4,000-foot mountains. That's 48 peaks, but there are still times when Mel hikes alone. Oh, it's so much easier. <laughs> um, she adds a lot of weight, so I find that I go a lot faster and um, 
it can be, it's good like if I just want to get out for myself and I do that a lot at night. Um, when I get out of work, I'll go up. When I do the big, the big trails, I like to have her with me. There's so many people that really enjoy seeing her. So um, I try to take her with me and just, I love being out with her. This is my first year doing Seek the Peak and it's actually, I'm working on my 48 right now. So it's my first time up Mount Washington. And how's so it So I'm a baby. Good so far. I mean, I've been training, getting ready for this. Hi. <laughs> uh, this is my first Seek the Peak, but I've been hiking mountains for about eight, no, nine years, nine years now. And I actually hiked this in 2012, but I wasn't a hiker yet. So I don't count that. <laughs> Floki and Mel are trail celebrities. Photos and questions are always welcomed. This is your best friend. <laughs> oh. Wow, that's so cool. Is this her first summit? Oh no, she's done of, over 120. Up Washington, though? <laughs> uh, this will be her fourth or fifth time up Washington. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's awesome. I thought it was the coolest thing. Yeah, so I'm trying to think. I think I saw her on social media first, but uh, Michaela, which is a mutual friend of ours, we wound up hiking together and I became friends with Mel no, instantly. So, yeah, I don't even bat an eye anymore. Look, yeah, I forget, I forget that she's there. I'm kind of used to just like looking at, at the two of them together as a package deal. Like I'm just used to seeing them together. It just looks normal to me. Definitely. <laughs> for sure. If, if Loki's along for the ride, just enjoys looking around, seeing all the people and just being outside, I think. Because I think normally she's a house cat and doesn't go outside. So it went out here, you would never know it. They just seem to belong together. <laughs> We're very bonded, that's for sure. But Mel's, Mel's an, a person and you have to love her too, not just Floki, you know, right? Mel is a person? Mel is a person, really? Yeah. This is part of what the team has left to face the head wall of Tuckerman Ravine. What do you think about this trail? I don't like it. No? Why? Um, have you taken it before? Mm-hmm. Um, that head wall is just a bear. I mean, it just goes straight up, and if we hit it in the sun, Burn out with this. It'll be torture. Is that what you're thinking about? Yeah. I'm thinking about taking my next breath. Listen to that bird. Oh, so see the people? That's where we're going. The head wall. Oh my goodness. I love the ravine. It is beautiful, that waterfall, once you get your eyes on it, is just incredible. Um, the whole hike up is really beautiful. And it's, it's a good climb. It's a good climb. Anybody, <laughs> watch your head. Some simple surprises along the way keep the hikers energized. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, have a good rest of your hike. It's it good to see you. Yeah, everyone's waiting. The head wall is everything the hikers anticipated. Rock scrambles, wind, and the rewards of effort. 
to keep moving, to keep taking one day at a time, just not to give up, always move forward. Um, always search for that thing and have that passion and just know that there's always going to be a light at the end of that day and you just have to hang on long enough to see it. I think that hiking with her definitely, you know, has helped, helped me for sure. Um, and that's why I say she rescued me because she kind of, seeing her through her eyes, if you will, you know, what it's like out here, uh, definitely kept me coming back. She gets um, pretty bundled up in the winter. Honestly, right here, even in the winter, as long as the wind's not bad, this is her favorite part. Doing good? Yeah. This is real. And this isn't. Whew. Here we go, just about to the top of the head wall. Floki enjoying life. Yes. Check out that view. Oh, man. We came from all the way down there. Doing great. Oh, man. The there. Nice. My God. So beautiful. It just makes you forget about everything else in the world. Uh, it's relaxing. It's a way to um, kind of work out the whole week. And just, it's like I always say, trail therapy. It just kind of helps with life stressors and you get to be out in the woods and there's studies that show how good that is for you. And so here we are. Loki sunbathing. Here we go. We're getting ready for the longest point eight of our life. The entire team is within easy reach of the summit. It's been more than three hours since they headed out this morning. Any self doubts they might have had are left behind. Overcoming that feeling of, I can't do this. Woo! And then you get to the top, and you're like, oh my God, I can do this. And look at that view, and it's so beautiful. And you're so proud of yourself for conquering the mountain yet again that you didn't think that you could. Um, and it's just a, it's a really awesome feeling. There's little time for celebration. A hug. A reminder of their success. And it's pack up and head back down. Back on Black Cap, Mel's had a few weeks to reflect on the Mount Washington hike. It's the same feeling that comes to her whenever she's out on the trail. Uh, Floki has absolutely helped me find a lot of, of what went <laughs> when she did. And to be out in nature and to have the fresh air and dealing with a lot of loss and a lot of the, the trauma that I've dealt with and that a lot of people I know have dealt with. Uh, just being able to get back out here and know it's not Leia, but you know, it's another hiking companion who enjoys it as much as I do most days. <laughs> um, and so that's, that's what's important. And that's kind of like what went when and she did, but I seem to have gotten back and then some because I never expected any of this to happen. So. 
Well, I've just about reached the end of my tether here on the way up the mountain, so I'm gonna stop here and turn around, go back down and say goodbye to Melissa and my new friend, Floki, <laughs> who's ignoring me completely. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go on, continue on with Chris, right? Mm -hmm. And I may see you another day, who knows? Absolutely. But thank you so much for the, it's been a pleasure to hike thank with you. Thank you. Such as we as it has been, you know? But uh, carry on. Absolutely. Okay, I'm on line. And hope to see you all again on Windows to the Wild. Support for the production of Windows to the Wild is provided by the Alice J. Rain Charitable Trust, Bailey Charitable Foundation, and viewers like you. Make a gift to the wild and support the Willem Lang Endowment Fund, established by a friend of New Hampshire PBS. To learn how you can keep environmental, nature, and outdoor programming possible for years to come, Call our development team at 603-868-4467. Thank you. Does she speak any Old Norse? I don't know. I've never tried. It gets Catholic flocky. It gets Catholic. No soap. I said <laughs> I love you. I love you, Floki. <laughs> <laughs>